Hey everyone, it's Joe here with Isaiah from the Automator, and uh, we were we were having a discussion about um, up doing some upload and, and and wrapping this script that I've been working on, and and the mention came up about form data, and I said, you know, this is one of those things that really frustrated me when I first started doing stuff was with web scraping and API calls that there was nothing really it would say you have form data but no one ever explained what that was and what it meant and why it was so difficult now i found like a function on the forum for dealing with it but again i was like well but why is this different and so <laughs> uh, let's let's do a little video here we're not going to go into the actual solution of it but just talking through what form data is and why it's different and what's going on so yeah so um in general just as an overview the the thing is that whenever you're passing uh, uh so, Whenever you're sending information to the to the server, especially in a post request, that means that you're sending stuff to the date, to the server. Um, usually, you have you're sending everything together. You're sending the whole information at once, uh, and you would see that in AutoHotKey when you use the send command, you could put a payload in the send function. You you know that right? So. Whenever you you use a Win HTTP request object and say and stuff, and you hit the send command, you could put a payload in the send command. That's where you would send information to the to the server. And usually, what happens uh, is that you're sending the whole thing as a big string. So you have a way to you, you need a way to actually tell the server that you're sending different uh, like chunks of information. And that's where form data comes into place. Well, hold, now, hold on. let me back up because that, that's where, and you said it earlier before we started recording, it was the multi-part form data, right? That, right. So, 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 yeah. Right. So this is, um, and this is something that I'm not really sure about right now, because now we're sending information in the form of JSON objects, right? So the JSON object already has a key value pair and a structure mm -hmm. that we didn't have before. And at that time, the solution was rather uh, uh, a little bit cryptic. Let me show you what I mean by that. So uh, we, we, we had this, um, let me share the screen right here. Um, we were uh, using this website here, which is a website to, that gives you different kind of forms. And you can just fill the forms and hit submit just to see what happens, right? And we just opened Fiddler for this website. And in the end down here, you would see that uh, we have this post right here, which is the one that we're looking at on the right. Now this post command, as you would see here on the, on the uh, when you have the body view and it says form data, you would notice that each uh, of these things looks like a key value pair. So you would say, okay, that's easy. You just put a key and a value Right. in the body and just send that. But in reality, it is not sent that way. If you see the raw here and you go to the body, which is after you have all your stuff, right? There is a blank space. And after that, that's the body. You will notice that things are divided by this weird string right here. And it is the same string over and over again. You, you can see that, right? And yep. each of those has the information that you're looking at as a key value pair. So they are not sending it as a key value pair. They're actually sending one line that contains uh, some data. It says form data. The name is form ID. That's the key. And this is the value. And full name first, this is the value. So as you can see, instead of having a key value pair, they are sending a key value pair right here. Uh, is that right? That's the problem. The structure is not really, um, they cannot use key value pairs, right? So they cannot use key value pairs because they are already using key value pairs here and they're sending the data in, the, in its own line. So how do I know that this is data for this thing? Well, with this string. Now this string, uh, usually they, uh, you could, do any string and what programmers did is that they generated a completely random string the reason for it is to make sure that um it, it was not in the form itself and usually they put a title on it like webkit for 
form boundary and then generated a random string. And after they have that, that's the string that they would use to delimit the form information. That's what's going on. Now, this is especially useful when they're sending, and, and you can see here that in this boundary here, I am actually sending an audio file. Now, you know that audio files or you know any type of binary file it usually has a lot of random characters. That's the reason why you had to create kind of like a random thing because that right. string might show up in the binary of a file or something. And that's the reason why they kind of like um, created this weird string trying very hard that that string does not show up in the binary, right? And here starts my, my stuff. Here's the file name. Here's the type. And now they're sending the whole binary string. Now, the funny thing is that this file was not too big, so they didn't do, they didn't split it into chunks. Just to, to, to interrupt you for a second here, because this, I know from what you told me a bit before we started recording, this technology was created a long time ago, right? Yeah, yeah of course. The, the stuff that was actually being transferred at the time, like, you yeah. know, a, a, a meg was a, a big amount of data. And right. The actual packets and stuff that was getting sent was much smaller. And so they had to parse it up, right? Now right. our technology might actually be able to handle the whole thing in one gulp, so to speak. Right. And 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 if I remember correctly, they there, there were some functions that and, and again, don't don't quote me on this because I'm not an expert on these kind of things. I just I just had to handle those when I was coding at the beginning, right? So uh, what I noticed is that certain files they would split it into chunks, right? and they would upload chunks of that file, if the file was big enough. And they would use uh, the the, stitch it together. the boundary, right, to, to actually kind of like stitch it into, into yeah. uh, um, different chunks to be sent to the server. And then the server would actually just piece everything together and then you have your file, right? And that was also useful to kind of like, if your upload was stopped at a certain point, like, <laughs> at that time, you know, you had this, uh, you didn't have broadband connection. You had the, you had this thing, somebody yeah. called your house and the internet connection right. dropped or something like that. Right. And you were uploading or downloading something. They had to right. have a way to kind of like continue. Well, yeah, they, I was upload, say, right? they, could, they could, you didn't lose everything that you had done, right? You could at the beginning you did, and right. then they figured out a way to do that. And yeah, that was right. by splitting the file into chunks. Right. And then you would say like, we were on the... 31st chunk, so let's continue on the 32nd. You see, so that was something that they, they did. But, but it was, the, the idea was splitting the files into chunks instead of sending the whole thing at once, right? Um, now, uh, as you can see from the beginning, we saw the, the boundary and now here we see the next boundary. And now I know that that whole thing is just one information, which is one file. And that was that's the idea with the boundaries, that's the form data. Now. Uh, Usually what you had to do, and this is what I was dealing with, is that you had to write those things yourself. So, so whenever you were actually sending data to the server, this string that we're seeing right here, divided into chunks, you had to do it yourself and you had to explain what the disposition was. Um, so, so the content, what type of disposition was. And if it was a file like this, then you had to specify the meme type. I don't know how, mime type or something like that is how you say it? Mime, um, yeah, M-I-M-E, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, the mime type, so, so, so you had to specify here the content type, you have yeah. to specify what it was. Because right. yeah, that's binary file, what is it? You have to specify that. All of those things, you have to do that yourself manually. Yeah. Then uh, you had this CURL library, and the CURL library, if you go ahead and read a little bit about it, it has a section that has to do with sending multi, part form data like this. And you just have to specify the file as a dash F, and that is a form <laughs> data. And for each for each uh, uh, data, for, for each form data that you're sending, you just put dash F, name, uh, yeah, I get just, it. and then dash F, the next one. And CURL will build this string for you. You didn't have to deal with it. Right. That's the reason why it, it, it actually got so easy 
that everybody migrated to CURL. And that's the reason why you still see in huge companies, when you go to their uh, API and stuff, you go to the examples page and you see CURL examples there. there because it, 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 it was kind of like revolutionary how, how, how easy it became, right? But um, yeah, I think that's my understanding of multi-parm for data. So so I'll, the other thing I want, I thought of a couple of things just to, to back up to. So go back to the, the form view, um, where you were showing the here no well that's fine yeah so anyway when when you when you you the form to me when i first thought of this was like usually it comes from a form but i, I don't mm -hmm. know if that's always the case but i think somehow usually on a website you're hitting you, you, whether you're just doing a file upload or uh -huh. you're filling out a form and a file like you have to hit submit and the web page, the browser is going to do this stuff and send it, right? But now go back into Fiddler and remember the the form view, form data view that it had. Oh, right. So, so here the form data yes. view here. Yeah. Right. So, this is where I'm I'm going from memory, but I think sometimes, like what you're showing here, this key value pairs. I think on on an actual form submission, sometimes I've seen that in the mm. URL instead of in the body. Right where I'm like, oh, that's what this is. That that's might happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah that might happen because really yes. So in this case, um, that might be sent when you're doing a GET request, and so, then yeah. the, the GET would be with the URL, and in the URL you would have the form data right. already structured. Well, but in this case, it is yeah. a POST request, right? Yeah, and and that's where I wanted to clarify is like, hey, if you're if you're trying to mimic a, a browser doing stuff. You don't always have to do this multi-part form data, right? If you're submitting, no. but it does come up, especially if you're submitting a file. That's all, every when I come in, you know, that's when it's like, oh crap! Now I got to. Yeah, and I think it it is especially true when you're uploading a file right. because uploading a file is always a post request. Yeah. There is no get for posting a file. No, sure. Right. <laughs> so, right. so, so whenever you have this uh, uploading a, a file to a server, you would get a post request with the file information and it is usually going to be, I, I, I don't know any other way of uh, sending data that is not a, a multi-form uh, data like this. And you would see here, it, they are actually pretty prettying it for you in which you just see the form ID and the, um, and, and the value like this. Um, and then the, the, the file, you could see here that it says content position, you know, audio file. And that's the whole binary for the file. Now, as you can see, it's a very small file. And that's the reason why it fits into this one little script, the screen. But just imagine that it was a, you know, yeah, 200 like megabyte video, video, right? Yeah, yeah so say, that, yeah. that you would not be able to scroll like this. And I don't know how Fiddler would handle that. If I upload a, a very big file, I don't know how Fiddler would show me that file here. Well, um, it would, yeah, it would be in multi-posts, right? It would be, it would break it up, probably. Very know. likely. I, I, would, I would bet that it would actually, for each post here, for each post request, it would be a part of the file and then which the is connects it all for us right exactly that's what i assume but in general and now you can have kind of like a general idea of what is going on whenever you're sending form data or uploading files this yeah, so, is true for both yeah and and so the great thing is again if you're actually um at, let's say you're at work and part of your job is submitting this crazy ass form that's really annoying right you could, you know, you could take this approach and automate the entire thing and make it yes. as easy as you want, right? It's, and it, it, it I would say, like, most of the times, removing the browser of the equation makes life easier or, well, makes everything faster. So if right. there's a way for you to do exactly as the browser is doing without yeah. having the browser open, you would see that the process is really fast. Yeah. And... and yeah. In case in point, and a lot of times when you are dealing, especially when you have a file up set, like with YouTube, when I go to upload a video, I have the first screen and then I got to fill out stuff and then I have to hit next to wait for that next thing to come up. And then I got to do the monetization and then I got to add the tags and I got to do them on all these different screens, right? And like this, you could you could build a little interf your own interface to collect everything you want right at the beginning and possibly even and then just pull spend from the there. whole thing. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And crank through it. So. Um, exactly. Thanks for walking through that. That was, it's, 
like I said, I've learned how to use it and do it, but I didn't fully grasp the whys and what it was, you know, why it was so special, what was different about it. But yeah, uh, it's pretty cool. You know, that, that those are the types of things that it, it is just when you get exposed to it for any reason, right? That's when you figure out that that thing exists. It's not something that you see very commonly. So it is not, there aren't, there's not much information, for example, in the auto hotkey forums no, that deal right. with this. So, okay, so, yeah, so we'll, because, we'll because you, 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 you needed it specifically in certain cases. So, yeah. I just like helping people because, uh, you know, I, I struggled, you know, just reading the forum stuff to learn this stuff. And yeah, there's not a lot of documentation explaining why, you know, what it is and why there's a little bit there. I, like I said, I found a, someone's function for doing it, but I had a couple like by refs in it, you know, and it's just, Oh, it's right, yeah. Than, than a normal function is. What I would what I would just suggest is go to the CURL uh, library, and in the documentation you might find uh, the, uh, the form. whatever has to do with the form sending yeah. forms with it, and when you have that, when you read a little bit about that, you might get a little bit of an idea. But the problem is that this guy is is is. Uh, as they just said, like the, the Libs URL section is huge. Yeah. It is a huge topic. It's not that simple. So you would need uh, a little bit of uh, time to understand what. Uh, and, yeah. And, and most people, especially dealing with auto hockey, like we don't need to know that granular, <laughs> but just a little no. background on why it's different, how to, you know, how to use it. Um, and, and we're going to be working with. Uh, Isaiah, like you said, he had written a, a, a class or a function, I forget. A library. It was a, a function for it. It was a function library for it. For working with curl. So we're going to we're gonna make sure that's still working. And uh, we'll, I'm sure we'll, after we've done that, we'll make a video on how to use it. Yep. Sure. Awesome. Well, thank you, ma'am. Oh, and if, if you guys are working on this stuff and you, and you want some help, you know, this is, we do offer services. So reach out to us and let us know and um, we can see if we can help you. Mm -hmm. Bye. Hey, thanks for watching that video. And if you wouldn't mind, ask questions or comment on the video. I read every comment that's in here. I don't always reply to everyone, but I do read everyone. So I really appreciate if you would comment. Also, like, uh, it really does help me out. Cheers.